Hey YouTube. Um, this will be part two in It's Witchcraft. Um, this one is going to require a little bit more legwork on my part because I want to post some links below. And it is still a matter of my opinion, however it is based on quite a bit of extensive research that I've done over the past few years. And it's not been like non-stop research, it's been, oh hey, someone will say something online and you'll go, well, I hadn't heard that before, so let me go check that out and see what happened here. Um, it's not going to cover everything, it just won't. It, it's not possible. There's too many holes and gaps to try and fill in everything, and hopefully you'll see where some of those are and where it gets really confusing, etc. Um, I have some notes. They're very basic notes. Hopefully I'll be able to cover everything. Um, basically one of the things it comes down to is the what you define what as. Because when I first came across the witch versus Wiccan debate, I was like, what are you talking about? Um, and it depends on if you want to look at witch as a person who is just a magical practitioner, in which case an argument could be made that it is just a magical practitioner and not necessarily witch. And that's another case brought into because a lot of people who were doing the magic who would have been termed as witches wouldn't have called themselves as such. But we have, oh gosh, the witch, Wiccan versus traditional witchcraft stuff. And it gets insane. So you had Gardner come up and he's got his Wicca with one C, which was attributed to Gardner and Charles Clark. Wicca with two C's was something that people thought of as Charles Cardell and his stuff. Then you had Cochrane and his, which was traditional witchcraft, which honestly, once you look into it, you find that there's not that much difference, no matter how much they say, there's these differences. They'll say stuff like, well, if we, we don't cast a circle, we do a compass round. That's like Peter Patton talks about that too. And it comes to a, well, Wiccans will do theirs clockwise. And we do ours counterclockwise. And, and then you look into it and you find out that sometimes people who would identify with Wiccan will sometimes do clockwise and sometimes do counterclockwise depending on the moon phase. If it's waxing, they do clockwise, or if it's full or the dark moon, they do counterclockwise, or if it's waning. <clears throat> there are many, many problems with this debate over which... Wiccan, whatever. Because a lot of it boils down to whose word are you taking? Because Doreen Valiente and Buckland and Ed Fitch and these people who were pivotal in craft history very much ended up advocating for solitary work. They may not have started out that way. In the case of Buckland, he was very much a traditionalist. You must be initiated into a coven. His first covens in America required rigorous training, yada, yada, yada. Until Ed Fitch came in and started a, that's that outer court, inner court, because he started something that people could practice without it being Gardnerian, witchcraft, Wicca, whatever. Um be so much easier if people were still using the terms synonymously as they used to be. This thing about they were synonymous. I have an awesome series. These ones? Man, Myth, and Magic. You can see how old and they've been used a little bit. And we will go over them at some point because they're really awesome. What's not in there? is Wicca. It's witchcraft. That's it. As I stated in the previous video, that's what they used to call themselves. It didn't matter what tradition they were from. In fact, the term Gardnerian 
was initially used as a derogatory type term, which started from some of the squabbles, which still boggles my mind because those squabbles are supposed to be sort of accounted for in the old laws. Hence, also the issue that I take with the neo-Wiccan movement is why are we coming up with another term for something when it's supposed to adapt and change? <clears throat> it, it is supposed to adapt and change. And it kind of loses that bucket of water when people are talking about, well, it's because it's supposed to be initiatory. Yes, in some circles. In others, it is not. Because here we have Doreen in uh, Witchcraft for Tomorrow. I think that was the book. I will double check. Has a self-initiation right. Now, the argument could be made that the self-initiation was a misnomer and it should have been self-dedication. But also you have Janet and Stuart Farrar in the Witch's Bible talk about a self-initiation right and how they deem it to be appropriate because enough covens were started at that point by people who were already self-initiated. It kind of became a, if you can't beat them, join them. Um, but we also have, at the, around the same time, with Buckland and Doreen advocate the solitary work, you also had, around the same time, you had Gardner come up, there was Cochrane. Around the same time Buckland came over to America, you had Robert and Yvonne Frost. Whole nother can of worms. They're not very recommended in their work. However, they had a mail order, like, learn witchcraft course, and anyone who had those magazines and I don't know if it was the green egg or what, could easily learn their stuff. And so it's, again, the floodgates opened. Are we going to shut it? You can't really shut it. It's already, the, the damage, so to speak, is done. Um, there are so many things that when you look at the different labels where they claim that, oh, we have these differences such as we don't have an athame, 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 athame. I've heard it pronounced five million different ways. We just have a ritual dagger. This is what we use. It's it's just a ritual dagger. Um, we don't have a chalice, but we use the sacred cup. We have cords that signify these three aspects of the divine, but it's not a triple god or triple goddess. And it just comes down to a, like, are you guys serious? This is not a spoon, it's a food shovel. Um... Or they talk about, like, we don't include Eastern stuff like karma and chakra points, but we have these points of energy that are on your body that, ironically, look exactly like the chakra points. It's kind of amazing. And my issue was, when I was looking up these things, is that there's really not a difference that's more similar than what's different. And any of the differences are something that's already accounted for within the other traditions. Like, someone will say, well, I didn't like the way that the Threefold Law or the Wiccan Read is stated, so I don't follow that. Well, you can find a path out there that will have, like, um... Phyllis Curot, Curot, however you say her name, with her tradition, they call the Threefold Law the Boomerang Whammy Rule. Because she, it, I don't necessarily agree with why she states it that way, because she believes that the reason you won't harm anything is because it's all love. And it comes down to because you love others, you won't harm others. But it's still, it is a, you were bad, so you're going to be punished. <clears throat> Which doesn't really have a place. I really, really think, as I, I stated in a comment on um, Sammy's video earlier, that I think with the threefold law and the idea of karma being adopted later into Wicca slash witchcraft, 
was to get you to think before you act. If you're not willing to accept the repercussions, you shouldn't be doing it. That's really what it comes down to. Be careful what you wish for. If you're not willing to accept the repercussions, don't do it. It's really, really simple. And the end ye harm none, do as you will can also be argued that it has nothing to do with what you should do magically. I've seen it spoken about that it really has to do with what others are doing if it doesn't harm anybody. They're free to do what they want just as you're free to do what you want to do. You know, if you are in a, a sexual triad, you're not harming anyone involved as long as everyone's okay with it, then it's fine. But if you have a spouse that's not okay with you sleeping with this other person, you're harming them, your spouse. Which is another thing, because that's apparently one of the uh, issues that Doreen Valiente had with Robert Cochran, a.k.a. Roy Bowers, and she called him out on it. Because he was cheating on his wife with, I think it was, that he was cheating with his spouse, with other members of the coven, and she called him out. She also called him out because he was constantly bashing Gardner, and she didn't like that either. So, it's just an issue. And therefore, it also kind of makes me take pause when you get the uber-traditionalists who talk about the elevation to um, the third degree and how the great rite is involved. And it didn't matter if you were married or not, you were having sex with the high priest. Or the high priestess and the high priest, again, it you can find the sources everywhere. But if you look at the sources that are available, like the Witch's Bible, again, Janet and Stuart Farrar, they talk about how sex just done willy-nilly would cheapen the magic. And it was supposed to be done with a couple that was already established. It's in there. Um, so it just becomes, it's like, it's kind of become a pissing contest. And it's really annoying for some of those who are on the fringe, so to speak. Because you have your eclectic Wiccans now, which, again, I mean, there is nothing to say that that can't happen. Because Ed Fitch was the one who came up with a source material so that people could practice the religion without it being the Gardnerian stuff. Again, it's another person who's pivotal to the movement. So, it just really comes down to where do you draw the lines yourself. I can see where people would get a little bit upset about people using a term when they think of it as just initiatory, just having this, but even that argument, it just doesn't hold, it, it just, it doesn't hold any real credence because of what was put down in the very beginning, saying that things adapted, things changed. And Gardner was very open, as I stated, I believe, in the other video, that this is how we do things, other covens might do it differently. So he had the door open from the beginning that things would happen much differently than what happened in the New Forest Coven or what have you. So it just, it really becomes confusing and it really is sort of a moot point. I'm very much in the progressive witchcraft camp. I read the book by Janet Farrar and Gavin Bone where she talks about how they talk about how they view the traditional witchcraft versus Wiccan versus what have you to just be divisive. And I truly think it is. We're already um, a minority in the path that we're on as being pagan why do we need to have it be, well, I'm the minority within the paganism group to be a minority within this group to be a minority within that? It's just, like, if that's what you want, then fine. But to speak about others in that manner is not really fair either. And it's also not fair if your practice is based on UPGs to go and try and speak for the valid, or for everybody. 
it's not cool for people who sit there and go, well, you know, Callie really told me that she's really into love. No, no, not when historically that's not the case. That might be for you specifically. They're, they're individual type of deities, and Doreen was very into that, having, you know, your own gods that speak specifically to you, and what they tell you to do is what you're supposed to do. That's kind of a carryover from the monotheism. Well, God said this, so it must be true for all of us. It's just not the case. You might be working with the same deity, and they might have two completely different things for two followers. It's just a matter of, uh, and it's a matter of how we view them and how they relay the message. Um, I think that that's basically it. I just kind of think that when it really came down to when Wicca and witchcraft became super popular is the world slash history slash universe, whichever way you want to look at it, was like 42 and a half weeks pregnant with these ideas because everything just sort of burst on the scene at the same time within the same time frame. And this was pre-internet. I mean, nothing was going viral and, you know, suddenly... So, yeah. If Gardner hadn't done it, somebody else would have done stuff based on Murray's works. And it's not, it's highly possible that some of these people did base their stuff on Margaret Murray's works and then still had this claim that it's gone back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And yes, Hutton talks about how that might be possible in Triumph of the Moon, but it's still not very likely. And I know there are lots of traditional or fam trap type of witches. Minion! Come here. Come here, Minion. Nope, oh, nope, cats. He's gonna go chase them. Come here, Minion. Come here. Nope. Now where was I? It, it would have happened, I think. The, the fam trad, which is who say that theirs came from a long line. At this point in time, we can't really disprove or prove any way, shape, or form. And it's possible at this point to have multiple generations who have been in some sort of craft. And they can't go to the person who started it and prove or disprove either because that person might be long dead. And it, it really is, it does become a matter of to just live and let live, you know, whatever will be. Because it's not really worth the argument. It's just not. It really is more divisive than anything else. And it's just an argument that doesn't need to be had. It's been 50 years of having these arguments over whether or not you're valid if you self-initiate or you have to be in a coven. And I would think by this point it would be done, but it's not done. <laughs> you know, it's just, if you're some minor figure in the movement and these major figures have already stated their case, it's a matter of a business practice saying, you know, if I was a CEO of a big company and I pass away and I leave it to Joe Schmo here and Joe Schmo decides that our business model is going to take this huge right turn, even if it's not something I saw, it's done. It just is. So I think that will be all before this gets way too long. I hope I cover everything okay. I will post a bunch of links below so that you can read and make some decisions of your own because certainly not all of them are going to agree with me. That's just a fact of the matter. Some people, like just like some people read Hutton's Triumph of the Moon and do come away with the fact that, well, there really were witches that survived as an unending line. That's you. That's your reflection in the mirror. Alright. Let's see Minion. 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 Oh, God.